Some say fall is their favorite time of year. And this fall, there are now updated COVID-19 booster shots designed to help protect against COVID-19 variants. If you've had your primary series, schedule an updated COVID-19 booster shot appointment as soon as you're eligible. And don't forget to enjoy the foliage. Sponsored by Pfizer and BioNTech. North Carolina State Parks is proud to announce that they have partnered with the Hometown Strong Program. Our visitor centers are now equipped with public Wi-Fi to help kids with school. Remote learning has become a critical public health measure in maintaining social distance and continuing to educate our young people. Take advantage of Wi-Fi and a hike at Goose Creek State Park or a day trip to the beach and access remote learning at Fort Macon State Park. For more information, visit hometownstrong.nc.gov. Are you ready for some football, Pirate Nation? Bud Light is America's favorite light beer and the official beer of the ECU Pirates. When planning your fun times this football season, be sure to pick up some Bud Light at your favorite retailer. Bud Light carefully brews their beer to be perfect for anywhere there's fun. Because when there's fun, Bud Light is there. Get ready to have fun this season, Pirate Nation, and always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Here today with Jeff Stein from Brown and Wood. Hey Jeff, how's inventory going? Inventory levels are increasing. For the first time in over 45 days, we have Mazdas in stock, Buick in stock, Cadillac in stock, and GMC in stock. I highly encourage the customer to go to gmc.com, build and price their vehicle, share that with Brown and Wood, and let us place your order. We need some price protection for these customers, and you got to place an order to have that. Brown and Wood, your number one dealership in Greenville, and the home of the lifetime powertrain warranty. The Dickinson Avenue Public House is a lively and diverse restaurant in Greenville that utilizes fresh and local ingredients. With influences of Creole, Asian, and upscale Southern cuisine, the Dickinson Avenue Public House offers a seasonally rotating menu and a full-service bar with rotating craft brews on tap. Come to the intersection of 8th and Dickinson and enjoy dollar-off drafts on Tuesday, half-price flights on Wednesday, half-price wine bottles on Thursday, and dollar oysters Tuesday through Friday from 5.30 to 7. For more details, check out their website at daphousenc.com. Com. Have you experienced increased aches and pains recently? Have you heard of CBD? Hemp Garden is your premier CBD retailer in Eastern North Carolina. Do you find yourself having anxiety or in need of extra sleep support? Hemp Garden has a variety of Delta 8 and hemp-derived Delta 9 products that can assist with those issues. If you're unable to stop by the store, don't worry. Give them a call today at 413-6100 for a consultation and they'll ship right to your door. Hemp Garden, 3040 South Evans Street in the Target Shopping Center in Greenville the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best everybody loves burgers all anniversaries are special, but because it's Bostick Sug Furniture's 85th anniversary extravaganza, we packed a lot into our big extravaganza with not one, not two, but three ways to save. Extra 10% off, plus 1937 local delivery, plus six months special financing on all in-stock and custom orders. Change your mattress, change your life, and get 48 months special financing during the big 85th anniversary extravaganza on now at Bostick Sug Furniture. Warren's Hot Dog Pizza, homemade lemonade. Hungry for game day, Pirate Nation? Take advantage of the Warren's Hot Dogs tailgate special of 10 or more hot dogs for only $1.50 each. And the best part, this special is available every day. Just call ahead and Warren's will have your order ready to go. Hungry for breakfast? Warren's Hot Dogs and Chocolatey opens at 5 a.m. with cheese biscuits, chicken biscuits, sausage dogs, and more. Warren's Hot Dogs in Greenville, across from Ron Ayers, or in Chocolatey next to the fire station. Go Pirates! This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. 
This is Eastern Carolina's longest-running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagler, Tiebreakers and Greenville Auto World. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Happy Monday, everybody. Happy Halloween as well. A victory Monday for East Carolina. The Pirates come up with that 27-24 win over BYU in Provo, Utah on Friday night. What a trip. What a game it was. We're going to relive the magic with Tim Douse. He is the special teams coordinator, also the defensive end outside linebackers coach at East Carolina. The Pirates are 6-3 and three into a bye week. Just three games to go in the regular season. The Pirates have already clinched a bowl eligibility spot. They'll be in a bowl game coming up later on in the postseason. That's going to be a lot of fun, but there's lots to play for, and we'll talk with Coach Doust about that. This is the Brian Bailey Show on Halloween on a Monday. We're back with more after this. Are my eyes playing tricks on me, or is that a jack-o'-lantern made out of pizza? That's something I want to carve up. Sink your claws into the jack-o'-lantern pizza from Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates! This isn't your regular cola, so this isn't your regular cola ad. No beach parties or family barbecues here, just Nitro Pepsi, the first cola ever infused with nitrogen. So forget everything you thought you knew about soda, because that nitrogen gives us a whole new experience. Think an infusion of smaller bubbles for a cola that's got a lighter, smoother texture. And don't get me started on the pour. You don't pour this like any other cola. We're talking turn the can completely upside down and watch as those bubbles cascade into the glass to create a frothy, luxurious foam topping. Can your cola do that? I didn't think so. Unless you've got your own Nitro Pepsi, in which case, cheers to your great taste. Because you already know that the only thing better than the pour is the unapologetic cola taste. What else is there to say? From the creamy foam to the smooth texture to its unbelievably delicious flavor, this is cola like you've never had it before. Time to bring your taste buds to the next frontier. Nitro Pepsi. Smooth. Creamy. Delicious. Greenville Utilities Electric customers will soon be able to receive text notifications in the event of power outages. Enrollment is automatic, so make sure GUC has your cell phone number by signing into your account at GUC.com, then update the information in your user profile. Want to talk with someone instead? Call 252-752-7166 during business hours. 252-752-7166. Update us so we can update you. Visit GUC.com for more information. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. Hey, Pirate fans, did you know there are thousands of special needs children and adults right here in our community that loves Eastview Athletics as much as you do? Robbie's Clubhouse is a local nonprofit organization that can turn your unused Eastview tickets into a fun day for a family with special needs. If you can't make it to the next Pirate game, simply call 1-800-DOWL-ECU and donate and designate your tickets for Robbie's Clubhouse. Go Pirates! This is Xavier Smith, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. Hi, welcome back on this Monday. Pirates win at 27-24 in a thriller on Friday night. 
What a great trip it was to Provo, Utah, and to relive all of the magic. Tim Douse, the special teams coordinator, defensive end, outside linebackers coach at East Carolina, joins us. Coach Douse, welcome to the show. Picked a good show to have you on, didn't we? Coming off a win, headed into the bye week. That's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> that's right. It cost, you, it cost you big time to get a slot like that. That's right. That's, I'll pay you back. I it. <laughs> All right. Andrew Conrad today was named as the American Special Teams Player of the Week for his performance on Friday night. Uh, the kick wasn't pretty, but you know what? It went through, didn't it? That's right. I think Coach Houston said it best, right? We've hit plenty of good yeah. off the foot that just missed this year. So, hey, the football guys got us back, and we, we're in good shape. So, hey, counted for three points, and good for that young man to get out in a situation like that and and come through on the good end of it hopefully that pays his dividends in the long run in that fourth quarter he missed from 42 but he didn't miss by much and as you said he kicked that one a lot better than he kicked the game winner but sometimes you know it's it's just a matter of the football gods looking down and and i think you know when you look at this season and some of the things that have happened in this season you know the pirates deserve to have one go through and uh it was just it was just one of those nights that that you know so many big plays happen i mean the kicker makes it at the end gets you know a bulk of the credit but that defense made so many big plays plays you know the fourth down plays and and then the three and outs late in the game i mean you know when you guys looked back at it at on tape i mean what did you guys see from that game well i think if you look at a big picture and i think you, you look at us right now as a football team i think it's about the team and, and our football team is coming together at the right moments right now the last few weeks um i think you know we needed the offense to pick us up a few times on friday night more than maybe we would like to on defense but they were able to do it uh, we were able to get some, uh, you know, some third down stops and three and outs and fourth, you know, fourth down stop uh, in critical moments for our football team. And then, you know, special teams, we pin them with a punt. Our kickoff coverage was, has been good. has been really good most of the year, but really turned it up these last few weeks. So I think our team, you know, when we need the offense to respond to a score from the opponent, they've been able to do it. And then we've been able to get some stops at critical junctures and turn the momentum the right way for the Pirates. I think our team is what I think – we look at around here is starting to come together at the right time of the year. It was my first trip to Provo, and I was just amazed at how beautiful the area was. And and I think I wasn't the only one because the players, as they got off the plane one by one, they were all taking pictures of the mountains. And and Coach Houston told us uh, on Friday, he said, "I told all the kids, you know, when you get you know get there early and get those pictures taken, and you got a football game to play." And I think that they listened to him, but it was really a scenic area, wasn't it? It really was, right? And that's exactly what he told the team. And when they took him, and coaches did too, uh, you know, that the, you get off that plan. I saw you there. There's beautiful scenery right there when you land. And you don't, we don't get that out here on the East Coast or the Midwest where I'm from. So it was beautiful out there and great things that football can take these kids to all different kinds of places. And uh, they were dialed in, and everywhere you looked, man, there was beautiful scenery from the, you know, the airport to the hotel to the stadium. And you could see why BYU's had such a great tradition for so many years. I know the Pirates took one of those big heaters with them on the sideline, and it turned out to be a night we were a little concerned going there that it could get, you know, drop and, and get kind of cold, but it really didn't, did it? I think with the, the momentum of the game and, and the energy from the crowd and everything that was going on, I, I don't think it, you know, it didn't even feel cold, did it? No, I don't think that the weather played a factor in it at all. You know, we talked earlier in the week about, you know, outside opponents and things like that. They, they could try to take away from us, and weather being one of them, but I don't – I don't think that factored in at all. And I think it was just, um, you know, our kids did, you know, obviously they had a lot of energy on the bus ride at the beginning of the plane trip home, but there was a lot of, a lot of respect paid uh, towards BYU and their fans and things like that. What, what a great atmosphere. You know, I mean, a lot of us coaches have been fortunate enough to coach in a lot of places, uh, but that's up there is, you know, loud venues and good places to play a football game at. Everybody there was really just super nice to, to all the Pirate fans. I've heard so many stories since we've gotten back. Uh, and I, they told me today that, that they they passed out ice cream to the fans in the stands, and uh, they just they just really played you know the role of host. They, they really welcomed everybody into the stadium. But but it was it was a, a big big wild crowd. I mean the the student section was very much into the game, and, and it was a BYU team that was pretty much desperate for a win. And when you look at at you know on 
paper, this is a pirate football team that had to go all the way across the country on a short week. So you guys had to cram everything into, you know, you lose a day of preparation and you get on, and that's a long plane. It's a four and a half hour plane ride. Uh, and and, and you, you get there and then, you know, you play the game and you play a really solid football game. I mean, there's, there's so much, there's so many positives to look at when, when you see not only just the win, but everything about it. Yeah, I think, as you say, Brian, it's, you know, you're a smart guy. You've been around us a long time. All of those factors, I think, are trending upward for this for this football program. That That is a great – road wins are challenging if you're playing across the street, let alone if you're playing four and a half hours across the country. And you load up those kids in a short week, and, and they did a tremendous job. And we and don't, don't kid yourself, BYU is a good football team. We got their best effort, um, and they, they, they gave it everything they had. So it was really impressive. Our kids kept fighting, played with a lot of energy. We weren't perfect. We weren't perfect by any means. Our kids would be the first ones to tell you that. But um, kept fighting and found a way there at the end. And we keep talking about it. It's kind of been a trend around here, figuring out a way to win on the last play of the game. And if it goes better than that, great. But, shoot, we found a way to win last play of the game. And that's what Steve Logan, he always said as the head coach of the Pirates, you have to be prepared to win the football game on the last play of the game. And Coach Houston has said it, you know, from the start. He said these games are going to come down, you know, right down to the wire. And a couple games early in, in the year didn't go East Carolina's way. Now they're starting to go East Carolina's way. But it's 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 really just fascinating when you look at the whole football season. And you look, well, well, you know, because I think leading up to the game, BYU was ranked 12th at one point in the season and they went on a little bit of a slide but they were they were very talented had a very good football team they had a very good game plan for east carolina i mean you know both teams were able to to run the football like like i think they wanted to run the football and the game came down to a couple of big plays but you you gotta really like the effort in the fourth quarter from that defense of east carolinas well i I think as as a football program right now we're ready for the fourth quarter yeah, and, and we take great pride in that from our training year round and on Sundays when we come back here and practice and run, you know, our four quarter program, like our, our kids are ready to go. And if it's close, uh, they, they, I mean, they're tremendous on the sideline. They don't waver. Just get, a, get the offense, the ball back, put us back out there. We'll get a stop. I think, you know, like I said earlier, the units are working together right now. And it's kind of that don't flinch mentality. Give us a chance and we'll find a way. And it's almost the same mentality, you know, next man up. Somebody goes down with a little, you know, an ankle sprain or something like that, limps off, next guy's ready to go in there. And it looks like, at least from being on the sideline, the guys are chopping at the bit to get in there. They want their chance, and they're flying in there when they get a shot. Yeah, you don't have to look far for a sub. <laughs> yeah. A lot of guys on defense, a lot of guys, and a lot more guys are getting involved on special teams. Um, so these kids are excited. I think if you get a chance to do that in a program, it just keeps the morale up. They know if they prepare and put the work in, they're going to get their opportunities under the lights. And, you know, and it's been that way, and that's what you need going down the stretch because we certainly need this buy that we're in right now. Some, a lot of our players are, are really banged up because they laid on the line for us. Uh, but then we'll keep developing those kids that have been great role players. And, you know, you get down the stretch and now you got a lot more options of guys that have been in the heat of the battle. And, then, you know, their eyes won't be so wide when we go to Cincinnati here in a couple of weeks. Nine games into the season, the Pirates finally get a bye. What's the perfect week for a bye? Like like week five or six? Uh, it's, it would seem that way. You know, math, mathematically that would make sense, right? You get it too early and you're like, oh, shoot. You know, we didn't need this right now. But I know right now. Oh, boy, and we desperately needed it. We desperately needed it, and I think it would be good for our kids to, you know, to, to get a couple of days off their legs and pull back on the banger and then, and then develop some of the young kids and then get a chance to, uh, you know, get on a road recruiting and things like that and see some of our guys. Uh, but this, this is, this is well, I think, overdue. But, you know, like right now, since you get a win going into it, you feel pretty good about it. Going you know, ahead and this, you know, we got a stretch run of three games right here. Or who knows what could happen. Pirates got in Saturday morning, 6.30 a.m. or so. What was the schedule since the Pirates got in? How much time have the players had off, and when do you guys get back together? Well, let's see. Well, they, they got off Saturday. We all got off Saturday. And then uh, yesterday we got together in a lighter Sunday. Uh, and watched the film and had our winner's dinner together yesterday afternoon. Um, and then uh, today is a, a normal Monday for, for our kids where they normally get the day off uh, today. So then we'll go back at it Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, this week. And then should I have to look at the calendar? Uh, I, that's about as far as I can remember. Keep it out ahead of me. And I, I know where I'm doing the rest of the week. But our kids have off Saturday, Saturday, Sunday off their feet a little. And they had a lift yesterday. And then today they'll be off as well. So we'll get some bumps and bruises, some guys back healthy, and then hopefully hit. Hit this thing, hit this thing running on Tuesday. 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with the practices. Friday, maybe a little lighter the weekend. Uh, some time off because of the bye week. And then uh, Cincinnati will be on the clock. And, and all of a sudden, this East Carolina football team, we'll talk more about it after the break, but you know, with, with UCF pulling off the win that they did over the weekend over Cincinnati, the way I've got this figured, if the Pirates can run the table, UCF still has to lose one game for the Pirates to get in that championship game. But we'll, we'll take a look at that. There's a lot of football still to be played. But, you know, as a fan, and as you, as you look at it, and I know Coach Houston said, hey, you know, we're right in the middle of this race. Cincinnati's up next. And I, I think the Pirates go to Cincinnati, you know, looking to beat the Bearcats for sure. So uh, we'll talk more about that. We'll take a commercial break right now. Tim Dallas is our guest special teams coordinator, defensive end, outside linebackers coach for this East Carolina Pirate football team under Mike Houston. We'll take your questions and comments on our Facebook Live page. If you'd like to uh, deliver one to Coach Dallas, we'll get it to him. Back with more on the Brian Bailey Show after this. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports, Highway 11, north of the airport in Greenville. The Panthers dropped a 37-34 overtime decision to the Falcons. Deontay Foreman rushed for 118 yards on 26 carries in the loss. Marcus Mariota threw three touchdown passes for Atlanta. Carolina is now 2-6, and six, the Falcons 4-4. Four and four. The Cowboys put up 49 points and beat the Bears 49-29. Dak Prescott, 21-27 of 27 for 250 yards and two TDs. The Cowboys are 6-2. and two. The Commanders got by the Colts 17-16. to 16. Former ODU quarterback Taylor Heineke was 23 of 31 for 279 yards for Washington. The Commanders are now 4-4. Four and four. The Eagles keep rolling with a 35-13 to 13 victory over the Steelers. Jalen Hurts threw four touchdown passes for the Eagles. Also, former ECU quarterback Gardner Minshew was 1-2 for two for 23 yards. Philly is now 7-0 and oh on the season. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now, get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Greenville Utilities Electric customers will soon be able to receive text notifications in the event of power outages. Enrollment is automatic, so make sure GUC has your cell phone number by signing into your account at GUC.com, then update the information in your user profile. Want to talk with someone instead? Call 252-752-7166 during business hours. 252-752-7166. Update us so we can update you. Visit GUC.com for more information. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares. Saturdays are your day to kick back, relax, and have fun. That's why Atavola Market Cafe is the perfect place to go for dinner, drinks, and takeout. Atavola is open every Saturday at 4 p.m. on the bar side, serving a special selection of menu favorites of appetizers, pastas, and specialty pizzas. Whether it's dine-in, takeout, or drinks with friends, Atavola is the best choice every Saturday starting at 4 o'clock. Visit AtavolaMarket.com to see what's new, and visit Atavola on Red Banks Road every Saturday starting at 4. Atavola, Pirates support. Supporting Pirates. Pirate Radio. I'll give you Blackbeard's honest opinion. You ask me, can this new captain promise you a life of prizes, plunder, and adventure? Aye. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community owned, community powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back. Tim Dows, the special teams coordinator, defensive end, outside linebackers coach at East Carolina under Mike Houston, is our guest on this Halloween Monday. Have a happy Halloween. Have a safe Halloween. And, Coach, you've got three daughters, so you can have a busy Halloween, aren't you? Yeah, Coach was generous. He's uh, going to let us get out of there and trick-or-treat tonight. So we're working pretty hard right now on the Bearcats. And then uh, 
get home tonight and trick or treat around the neighborhood. Be a good time. That will be a good time, and you and you know that's one of the things that I think as as a as a dad that that you you cherish those times. But as a you know in, in some jobs, and you've got one of them like that, you can't be around for for events like that very often, especially in the fall. Uh, and and that's because of the bye week and everything. I'm sure that that plays into it. But you gotta you gotta be thankful that you get a chance to do that tonight. That's right. Be a, I tell you what, work for the right one and marry the right one. That's what my advice would be. You know, <laughs> That's right. Able to, able to check those boxes. So we'll have a good time tonight. You just don't get them mixed up and uh, marry the wrong one and work for the that one. You you got you see what I'm saying? Six and three, the Pirates after winning three games in a row. When when you look at where you guys are at, I mean I mean you say we got to get healthy this week. We got some guys banged up, but you, you know the health of this football team. You know it, the off week came at a great great time. Can you see that on a daily basis when guys come around and say, "Hey, I feel a lot better. I feel a lot better." That kind of thing. Oh, yeah. As you go through it over the years, if you can give a kid 24 hours, they feel a lot better. So uh, th- this will be a good stretch for our kids. Because everyone in the country is banged up right now. That you, you really put your strength conditioning program to the test of everything we do it all year round. And, you know, and Coach does a good job of figuring out the, the right things to do because, you know, we're going to be physical around here and take great pride in that. But we also got to be smart, and that's the head coach's job. And uh, we're making sure he, take, you know, he, he will take a look at that and put us in the best situation so we can play with an edge. Every time we're out there, so we'll make sure we are physical on both sides of the football because that we obviously believe that's that key to our success around here. But um, our kids buy into that, so they know when it's time to be physical and time to go, and uh, we'll be in good shape going forward. Let's go back to the BYU game. You're on the sideline. We've got a 24-24 tie. BYU calls a couple of timeouts trying to ice uh, Andrew Conrad. What were you thinking on the sideline? Uh, what was the thought process? And and what were you, were you guys talking to, to Andrew at all, or everybody kind of stay away from him? Yeah, you know, Coach and I just discussed where the ball, you know, where we'd like the football to be at, and they, the offense got that done for him. And then, uh, you know, Andrew. He, he's an athlete. He's a competitor. He played a lot of sports as a kid. He's pretty loose over there. He's a fiery. You know, he missed the kick, and he's going to react, and, and not in a negative way. Um, he, he's a fiery kid, and he wanted that ball in his hand. And like after one time out, he looked at me. He said, "Man, they just let me kick the ball," and he's laughing and, and ready to go. <laughs> he's a pretty loose kid, so um, no. But he, he's a good kid to be around. I think it takes a special kid, uh, the mindset to make that kick, especially as a young kid. And he was all smiles afterwards, but he was shaking his head too because he knows he knew he didn't hit it all that well. But as you said, sometimes the football gods look down, but that one went through the uprights. You know, when you look at at Owen Daffer, who lost the kicking job earlier this year, the job that he did last year, you know, the kicking position is so difficult and so much is on you. And I, th- I think half the world felt sorry for, you know, what happened with him missing the kick against NC State, the extra point. I, I mean, it was it was just one of those things. I, it, from the outside looking in, it's like it got into his head. He's still kicking off for you guys. How has Owen handled everything? Owen's a great kid. Let, 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 like, th- get that out there as we, we deal with these, these football players to the outside. Well, you come in this building, you're dealing with 18 to 22 year old kids that are great kids. And, and Owen Daffer is a great young man, a great student, and a great kid to have on our football team. And we don't have last year's success without Owen. And everyone talks about Navy, but as you were at that Marshall game, that onside kick was as big as anything that happened last year in our football program. It really was. I mean, we, yeah, when we needed a win, he went out there and executed a kick that so many Saturdays you see people aren't able to execute those onside kicks, and, and he and he was able to do that. So I think myself and, and, and so many people associated with this program will, are always going to be grateful to, to Owen Daffer and continue to that. We know we've talked to Owen. <clears throat> Owen's a great kid, um, you know, and we, we made that decision to move to switch to Andrew. Uh, but we said, you know, coach said to, to Owen, hey, if this is the lowest, lowest goal in your life, you're going to have a pretty good life. And how he responds to this will say a lot about him. And he's been tremendous as you go through the transition and you watch Andrew Conrad go out and practice and hit a field goal, and the first guy to congratulate him is, is Owen Daffer. Or when he, you know he makes a field goal or extra point in the game, Daffer's patting him on the back. That that says a lot about Owen Daffer. So I'm really proud of that young man, and, and there'll be brighter days ahead for him. 
And that's really good to hear. I'm glad we were able to, to get that out there because, as you said, you know, I, sometimes we forget things like the Marshall game because the Pirates were down 17 last year, and that was that was dire straits time because the Pirates had to had to turn that season around, and they did, and it was Daffer's onside kick that was, was part of the magic that night. That's, that's – uh, that was one of the the great comebacks uh, in pirate football history, really, coming back in that fourth quarter. And then, of course, we always talk about the Navy game, the 54-yarder, and just the smile on his face then. Things haven't been as good this year, but as you said, you know, great people tend to bounce back, and it sounds like that, that Owen Daffer's going to bounce back. I mean, he's, he's going to be, you know, he's okay now, and, and I think that that's, that's a key for this pirate football program. No question. As you look at it, hey, that kickoff team and that kicker kicking on the kickoff team, that's incredible critical part to our success because we have a darn good kickoff team and then we're able to ask him to do some different things on kick to kick and week to week because this league's got a lot of speed back there and he's been able to do that so he's very important to what we're doing moving forward all right, let's talk to you the other side because the special teams coordinator job is difficult enough, and then you've got the defensive ends and the outside linebackers. So let's talk about that room a little bit and, and some of the guys that you work with on a daily basis and what you've seen out of those guys. Well, you know, we, we felt going into the year, we had a pretty good good group going into it. And then uh, Josiah Robinson, a young kid, an explosive kid, we thought was going to give us a lot of pass rush going into the season. He gets hurt early in the year at NC State now for the year. You know, Manny Hickman's a returning starter. Chad Stevens has done nothing but get better and better and better in his transition from shooting a linebacker in high school, then he played outside linebacker, now moved to defensive end about midseason last year. And he has flourished in that role and gotten better and better. But we had a couple of injuries. Manny got banged up. Chad has been dealing with some injuries, and he'll be glad to, to have a couple of days here to recoup. Uh, then we moved Rick DeBrew over there to help us because we had some guys down. Um, but it's going to take the group of us as we go down this stretch, and I think they all have attributes to, to help us out, and they will. Uh, great kids that will, that will go out there and, and find, find roles for us in those last three games to, to, to split reps and get the best guys out there at the right times, and that's the decisions we make as coaches to get those guys out there. Um, the rush outside linebacker spot is a very valuable spot in our defense and allows Coach Harrell to do a lot of different things, allows us to be multiple. Uh, Jeremy Lewis has played the Lions, share those reps there, backed up by Jack Powers, who, who's been a special teams dynamo this year, and he might lead us in tackles on the kickoff team. Um, he, he spells uh, Jeremy from time to time, but uh, Jeremy is, you know, very explosive, can rush the passer extremely well, but then it's his athleticism and lets Coach Harrell go from four down to three down and how many people he wants to drop or does he want to blitz Jeremy, and, and he's done a tremendous job with his high football IQ of being able to get us in and out of little defenses here and there that people might not see. But his flexibility and intelligence at that position has really helped us out. Yeah, I was going to say, and I like to talk about Jeremy because obviously he played his high school football at South Central. We've seen him play football for a long time, and, and he seems to just get, to get better and better year in and year out. And I think that that his maturity level has come a long way. And I think that, that at least from the outside looking in, you, you see the, the way that he's able to lead a, a little bit, and he leads and you know by example. And, and I think he's he's done a really good job this year. Yeah, you say you're on the outside looking in. You're pretty you're as close as anybody to the program. <laughs> a lot true. of things, you know, close up. I know that. Um, <laughs> and kudos to Jeremy. You know, we've had you know very candid talks about strengths and strengths and weaknesses, and he's addressed them and, and, and works harder to get better. Last year, defense was was you know essentially new to him at the college level. I know he did it in high school, but you know he was playing tight end here. Yeah, and uh, some things were new to him, and then things you could see it spring ball and summer and, and things were clicking a little bit faster for him. <clears throat> we're able to have very uh, short and clear conversations about adjustments on the sidelines and he understands things very, very well. So he's very important. That position and Jeremy obviously playing it is very important to our defense. You talked about his work on uh, special teams with Jack Powers. He may he may be one of my favorite pirates because he does a great job when he comes in and, and, and he, he goes in front of the cameras and the microphones and he, he's very, very polite, very, very nice. But I think he's uh, – I, I've seen him on the football field and he loves to get after it. <laughs> he knows how to turn the switch, Jack. He does that, yeah. Get in the line. There's a lot of people around this building that feel the same way about Jack. Boy, he's a great addition to, to us, and uh, we're extremely happy to, to add him into the program last year. Obviously, a, a positive to the transfer portal. You know, he has his owned his role and accepted it and loved it and flourished in it, so keep him going. I think I think he's on three of our four core special teams and plays um, another handful of snaps for Jeremy as well, but he is a great guy to have around 
in your program on a daily basis, and I think he's a big part of uh, why that kickoff team is doing so well. You mentioned Chad Stevens a little bit. Talk about him and Rick DeBrew and that position on that side. So, you know, Chad has always been a guy that, that you saw tools, you saw tools, you saw tools, and it was able to, as the season went on last year, said, okay, you know, hey, that was a big play by Chad. And, and then as he took ownership of the position going into this past spring and this offseason, he had a very strong fall camp. You know, we had to um, minimize some of, some um, some errors here and there to, you know, decrease the big plays by the offense, and he has done that. Um, and he's really went on a stretch of playing three or four games really, really well. I think he, he will benefit from, you know, having a couple of days off here to get his body fresh. But he is a strong, powerful kid. With some of the things we ask him to do, getting in the B-gap and being aggressive, physical up the football field, he can really put a dent in the offensive line. And he is, our kids will tell you, I don't know exactly where his weight room numbers are, but he is strong, strong kid. When Chad hits you, mm-hmm. you feel it. And he, um, he's done a very good job for us and is a big, big part of us moving forward. You know, Rick DeBrew, is, you've seen him flash throughout his career here. And now he's going to be outside playing end for us. I say outside, he plays outside and inside. We do a lot play defensive end. And, and then, you know, Manny Hickman was a, has played a ton of football here for us. He's coming back off an injury and, and ready to get back in the fold. So I think those three kids are going to be critical for us. You know, to, to really, because we, you know, as you, you look at the schedule at the beginning of the year, you say, holy smokes, we're going to stretch there and playing some big time football programs from, you know, Memphis, Central Florida, BYU. Cincinnati, Houston, Temple, like, hold on, we'll buckle up. We need to be in, in good shape moving forward. So we need everybody on board full speed ahead. Yeah, you're halfway through the Big 12 gauntlet right now. The four teams headed to the Big 12, and the Pirates are 2-0 and after the wins over UCF and this past weekend over BYU. Cincinnati and Houston still to come. Cincinnati on the road after this coming Saturday. That'll be the next week. And then the Pirates host the Houston Cougars. And then closing out the regular season uh, up in Philadelphia against the Temple Owls. So uh, the football season, it, it's quickly you know winding down, but it's so exciting, I think, right now because the guys, you know, buying into everything six and three on the season bowl eligibility now you're playing for you know a conference championship basically in these next three games if you can take care of your own business you got a shot and either way you're kind of looking at the bowls and kind of you know jockeying for position there but uh there's just so much to play for isn't there well there's a lot to be excited about when you wake up right now there's a whole lot to be excited for so it's easy to get guys going easy to get going to practice and game plan and you know, Cincinnati's up next. You know, if they're, they're up next, handle handle what we can and put our best product out there. And our kids have been able to do that and, and, and not been perfect yet. So maybe the best football's even ahead of us. So that'd be great. Did you have a chance to see the Cincinnati UCF game at all when, when it was played on TV? <clears throat> well, you know, in, in between being a dad and the great thing about <laughs> being uh, a, dad, dad, a football dad, those girls like football. So they were able to take a break and say, hey, let's watch football. So we watched a little bit of it. Good. That was. Uh, a very good football game, two very good football teams, two of the best teams in this league, you know, really going at it. and A lot of emotion played in that football game, but um, we got our hands full. It's Cincinnati. Um, there's a reason they've been conference champ and represented this league last year in the power, you know, in, in the playoffs, and they got their hands full this week at Navy. So I'm glad they get to, you know, one more shot to get beat up a little bit more before they play us. Yeah, and that is, and Navy, Navy beat you up in a different way, so that could be an advantage, right? That's right. That's right. Well, you know, you're always looking for a little advantage this stretch of the year. But we got our hands full. They're a good football team. We know that. <clears throat> and like, I think the kids will be extremely excited. You know, um, we were very obviously we, were, we felt like we were very competitive with them last year going into the fourth quarter. Had a chance to win that football game. It you know, didn't make the place we needed to. So I think our kids will be excited to get one more shot at them before they go on to Big 12. And I think the exciting thing that you said really right there is you said UCF and Cincinnati are two of the best teams in this league, and the Pirates have taken care of UCF. And that pretty much, you know, looking at it, and East Carolina with that 6-3 and three record, East Carolina can be considered one of the best teams in this league in the American Athletic Conference. And I think that's the thing that, that Pirate fans can walk around Greenville and, and hold their heads high because, you know, that's something we haven't been able to say for a long time. Well, let's go one at a time, and I think we can, you know, see if we can make a little more pride as we go through this thing and get out in the bowl season. And I think, you know, doing what what was able to do last week, Friday night on a, on a big stage where, you know, I know what goes on on Friday nights for us. We're watching who's playing the Friday night game, and a lot of people are watching that game and get another opportunity this, you know, with Cincinnati, another Friday night game for people to watch that. So put our best forward, handle what we can, and uh, I think things will work out.
Tim Dow, special teams coordinator, defensive end, outside linebackers coach, our guest on this Halloween Monday. We'll take another break right now. We'll come back, talk more special teams, and then we'll get Coach Dow out of here so we can enjoy the rest of Halloween. Back with more on the Brian Bailey Show after this. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in Eastern North Carolina. With homes in Blackwood, Mills Creek, Dalton's Cove and Farmville, and Belmar and Aiden, they're constantly expanding. Now to Laurel Glen and Sarah's Way, plus the new duplex community at Abigail Trails. BMS Builders can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or ECU football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes and they can build yours as well. Call 916-1578 for BMS Builders. It's bow time. Why are Bojangles Chicken Supremes called Supremes? Well, with golden crispy chicken tenderloins this juicy, tender, and full of bold flavor, what else would you call them? Superbs? Nah, that would be weird. Get your Chicken Supremes combo today with a scratch-made biscuit, your choice of fixin', legendary iced tea, and have you heard there's a new sauce in town? Try our new creamy buffalo sauce when you get a Chicken Supremes combo today. It's bow time. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Holt Nailers for my friends at ArcPoint Labs. Just as I trust my teammates, you can trust ArcPoint Labs to give you quick and accurate results for your laboratory testing needs. ArcPoint Labs provides insights and solutions to enable individuals, businesses, and communities to make informed decisions on their health, safety, and well-being. Visit any of the six Eastern North Carolina ArcPoint Labs locations or go to arcpointlabs.com. Go Pirates! Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville is the perfect place to get all your amigos together for some Mexican food, fun, and football. Chico's has been a game day tradition for Pirate football fans for over 30 years. Whether the game is home or away, make it a Chico's day for some great specials and the best chips and salsa in town. Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Go Pirates! Come and explore great shopping in downtown Washington at Naughty Life. Hi, this is Gina from Naughty Life, and new fall merchandise is arriving every day, featuring all the new Yeti products, like the loadout buckets and waterproof dry duffel bags. We have new fall clothes for men, women, and children. At Naughty Life, we have something perfect for any occasion, like new jewelry and a great selection of sunglasses from Costa Reflect and RCI. Visit Naughty Life on Main Street in historic downtown Washington, and like us on Instagram and Facebook. At Jimmy John's, we don't make sandwiches. We make the sandwich of sandwiches. We use fresh veggies because we don't hate salads. We just feel bad for them. We make our sandwiches exactly how you want because you're the one who's eating it. And we bake bread all day, every day, because stale bread isn't bread. It's croutons. Sandwich history is written by the victors. Good thing we have legible handwriting. Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. Order pickup or delivery on the app. This is retired ECU baseball player Charlie Jorgen, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Halloween Monday. Tim Douse, he is the special teams coordinator, defensive and outside linebackers coach under Mike Houston at East Carolina. The 6-3 and three Pirates have this weekend off, taking on the University of Cincinnati, another Friday night game a week from this Friday. Now, this Friday is the first round of the state high school football playoffs so we will miss round two of the state playoffs or i will because i'll be on the road with the pirates in cincinnati coach when you have a week like this off will you guys be able to get out recruiting on friday to go to some of these playoff games yeah there's a small group of us headed out wednesday another group thursday and friday and, and then we'll get out and, and and touch the guys on the you know that we're, we're deep in with right now at this point in recruiting but it that's the tough part being this late in the year you know everybody else has been on the road you know, trying to get your guys and things like that. But <clears throat> we will uh, hit the road going. So not, not much downtime as far as that stuff goes. A little bit of travel here at the end of the week. With the bowl uh, shot already locked up, you know you're going to be playing in a bowl. 
but you also have the early signing period and which bowl you play in is going to play into how you handle the early signing period because that is very difficult a very difficult time to handle both you know is that do you like the early signing period or would you rather send it you know keep it in february you know i think at the end of the day i think most coaches would say they like the early signing period a lot of our a lot of recruiting has sped up over the years. A lot of our guys have already, you know, made their official visits to campus and, and things like that and had them in the summer. So there's there's a handful of guys, I think a good number of guys that we're on right now that are really good players will find a way to get them on campus between now and then. But, uh, you know, you're talking about good things. If you've got to balance bowl practice and games and things like that with you know, signing top-level recruits, we'll, just, we'll figure out a way to do it. You know, we'll handle good problems. Pirates were in the military bowl last year, and, and the coaches had their families alongside with them uh, trying to get ready, trying to spend Christmas. Santa Claus somehow found a way to get to D.C. for all the, the coaches' uh, children, which was kind of a cool deal. With And really, it was a family-type atmosphere that Mike Houston wants uh, anyway with the team and with the coaches and with the, the children around. And really, that was the time. I, I've never missed Christmas before with my family. That was the first time I've ever done that. But seeing all the coaches with their kids and, and the fun that you guys were able to to have uh it kind of it kind of made me feel like hey you know we're kind of at home we're kind of in this family together it, you know but would you rather have a bowl game where you play earlier because there are some bowls that the uh american is hooked up with that play you know 17th 18th 19th 20th of december would you rather have that t- kind of bowl where you play earlier and then you come home for christmas or or do you do you care at all well yeah to me uh being you know coaching this long and being a Division three guy at heart, you can put me in any bowl at any time, and let's go. Let's go play at 6 a.m. in the frigid cold. I don't care. <laughs> let's go play. So I, I'm always going to be grateful for those postseason opportunities, and that, that is the honest guy truth. And I think we got a bunch of kids in this, in this roster that feel the same way, uh, still hungry and ready to go. So that, there'll be no complaints on where we go on the bowl trip. As long as we get to go on one, and the most important thing is the Pirates find a way to win. So uh, I don't think you'll any, any gripes right here, but there'll be pluses and minuses with the scheduling and things like that, I'm sure. You know, it'd be one less thing for our wives to handle with uh, they didn't have to figure out a way for Santa to show up in a hotel. Yeah, that's the truth. And, and and they get the bulk of that because obviously you guys have a job to do in trying to get the team ready to go. I, I think this Pirate football team, you know, wherever they play in a bowl game, they'll be so fired up and hungry to win a game because not only did you guys have great practices in D.C. that were almost flawless from, from what Coach Houston has said and from seeing it, you know, from watching it from the sideline, but, but and then you lose the game because of the COVID situation with Boston College, but I would say that this is a team focused you know will be focused ready to go to win whatever bowl game they end up in and and hopefully we're talking about a bigger game even before the bowl game hopefully we're talking about a conference championship game maybe at Tulane a rematch with the green wave but that's way down down the the pike I guess you could say but but th- this team especially with Holt Naylor's their quarterback and his last you know it'll be, it'll be his last game as the quarterback at East Carolina and with everything out there I got a feeling that this is a power football team that's really going to be focused in on that bowl game uh, you're getting you're way ahead of yourself slow down <laughs> slow down <laughs> slow down just a little bit yeah well i i agree with you because cincinnati's on the clock and that's all we need to talk about what what do you see right now that you've seen on tape and you've seen in person or not in person but on television with the uh the bearcats in that game against uc because that was a good football game that was a good football game and those are two really good teams that have done it year in and year out i mean cincinnati Returned so many people, a big offensive line, speed on the perimeter. Obviously, change at the quarterback, but this kid was up at Eastern Michigan and, and played every every game for those guys last year. Started for them, and now has come back to Cincinnati with a lot of game experience, and, and he facilitates the, that ball out to all the guys. And, but this is a really good football team. Speed. They've always been strong on special teams with all the speed and athleticism that football team has. So, you know that. This is going to be a challenge. There's a reason that they've won so many in a row uh, in our conference uh, up until last week, and I'm sure they're going to have a chip on their shoulder. And, you know, a road game is always going to be a challenge. And what you see on, on film is that place is packed, and I expect it to be the same when we show up. 
should be a lot of fun, especially after the off week for East Carolina. When, when you think of, of, of special teams at East Carolina and, and your job, when you guys go to camp, uh, do you have it set up who you think are going to be in the roles of you know, your snapper, your punt returners? You have an idea, and then you kind of go through camp and solidify those ideas, or is it kind of open season and you're kind of looking at everything and, and you select who's going to do what on special teams from what you see in camp? Well, it, you know, it starts it starts immediately you know, in spring ball. We don't, you know, those those kids, and we work on all the specialty, you know, returning kicks and snapping and punting and all those type of things, and then those core positions across whether you're covering kicks or returning kicks or blocking for kicks. Those are those are you know, especially situations as well. You're asking a wide receiver to protect on punt or kick return and things like that. They don't do uh, on a daily basis. So we'll, we work a ton of those drills, and you know we have a little chart we fill out here that the body types that can do certain things and what you're looking for to fill out those things. And then you put them out there on the field, and we have a lot of big group discussions. So you know to iron out who should be where, and, and that's day in and day out. You give someone an opportunity and they, they make good on it or they don't. you got to make a, make a change or don't make a change and you know balance that with the number of reps that get in on offense and defense to get the right guys out there. Um, and I think that's evolved really well. I think we're hitting our stride at the right time. You know, um, had some issues early in the year, as we know, on the field goal team. And, and, and um, But uh, moving forward, I think we found some good spots and some good players. I think our kickoff return team, you know, has got a shot every time if we can get a returnable kick. Our kids are doing a better, better job. I think they believe what Coach Foster's asking them to do with the return unit. You know, you know, just I have it was as fast as anyone in our program. So we can get him a crease, he can get more on that. We just saw, you know, Malik with another good punt return last week. Um, and he had the earlier one that, that South Florida. Those are huge, huge plays for our football team. If you can get the offensive first down before they take the field, that's a, that's a huge thing. You know, Luke Larson hit that punt inside the 10-yard line, and our, our defense was able to get a stop those flip the field for us and kickoff has been a weapon all year long i think the personnel covering those kicks and blocking and doing those things has gotten better every week um um, this season so keep it going this week we spent a lot of time on it we will will devote time to it here in the off the off week as well to see hey who else should we get out there and, and then make sure we're sharp going in here down the home stretch some teams use most of their starters on the special teams. Some teams try not to use starters on special teams. Uh, at East Carolina, it's kind of a mix, isn't it? It certainly is. At the end of the day, you got to put the best players out there. And, and some of our starters aren't the best ones to go out there and do it. And some of our, our I say backups, but I know on defense, we play so many guys. Uh, to be a number two here at East Carolina, that, that just means you're not going out there the first time. Yeah, you know, we take the field. So a lot of our guys are getting a lot of reps on special teams. You know, Ryan Jones covers punts and you know, Chance Chance Bates does a great job on punt and kickoff and those type of things. And got guys are playing a lot of football are contributing to us on special teams. And and some of these guys contributing on special teams, like like a Ryan Jones, I don't know if he'll be drafted or not. I do know that that he's got a chance maybe as a free agent somewhere to play on Sundays. But if he can go into an NFL camp and and excel on special teams, there are jobs out there for a guy like him, right? Yeah, there there are. And I think that's, you know, part of our our role as a coach is to help these kids be in position you know, for life after East Carolina football. And if that's football, you know, a chance in football for somebody, that's great. Because not only, you know, there's many, many kids that that, um, play in special teams for us, but, you know, Ryan goes out there with punt. Well, we go out and we do drills every single week. And and Ryan and so many other kids get a chance to do those drills. So when they get a chance to perform those in in front of somebody else, it's not the first time they've done it, you know, those those type of things. Um, So Ryan will know how to do a lot of their facets of special teams when he gets out of here. How much fun has it been to work with Luke Larson as your punter? Because he's, I think he's almost as old as I am. I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't seen his driver's license, but, but he's up there for a college football player, isn't he? You know, he's a mature kid. He's very cerebral, can see a lot of things. He's able to come out there and talk to me about what he saw and what he thought on many, many situations. And it's been good for that kid to study the room uh, of specialists this year. So it need his best, need his best performances moving forward. That's for sure. And he's really, you know, one of those. Every time you see him, it's hey mate. I mean, I mean, he's he's got the Australian background, and uh, he's just he he really is just a nice kid. Yeah, and he's always mate. That is right. That's that's what he refers to. So that yeah, a very strong Australian background and a good kid to be around. 
All right, as the special teams coach, how many heart attacks did you have in the BYU game? Because I can think of a couple of, of plays that happened in that game that you had to be like, you know, the, the punt return, the, the, the muffet near the goal line. Uh, what, do, what do you coach as far as where you're supposed to call for a fair catch and catch it and where, where you leave it alone? Because I think it's a 71-yard punt. I think it was Malik Fleming. Didn't he get lost? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, and that's really what – what, what Malik verbalized. I mean, the kid hit a big punt earlier in the game that Malik was able to catch, and he outkicked his coverage, and Malik was able to get a good return. Our right. Tremendous job uh, of, blocking, of blocking for him on that play. And I think he hoped to do the same thing, and just didn't really. That ball just kept on traveling. And then you just tell a kid, hey, don't catch it over your shoulder if you don't catch it in front of you. You know, if you can't catch it square in front of yourself, just let it go and let it play out. That ball may or may not have gone to the end zone. We'll see. But that was that was a long pump, but I don't think they expected either. And, and again, thank the Lord, Malik was heads up and, and got on that football. And that was said right there. That could be a turning point in our game. But I tell you what, Malik recovers it, and our offense got it out of the deep end right there. That was that was the big key that that he recovered it, and then the bigger key maybe that you, the offense got you know away from the uh, shadows of their own goalposts, as they say, because that was that was a key element in that game. You had a kickoff return, a fumble on that, and you had Johnny on the spot. There was somebody right there to recover that football. So, you know, as you said, the football gods were looking down on you, kind of a little smile from uh, Provo, Utah. You know, there's something about that, and there's something about you know playing hard and all the way to the whistle, and yep. good things happen. You know, Ty Moss is the young man that recovered that kick for us, and he was, you know, not praised in the media, but certainly praised uh, in, in our building yesterday during film session because that's as big as plays anything. Our defense has just been on the field and given up a drive. The last thing you want to do is go three and out and give them the ball back, let alone give them the ball back right on the ensuing kickoff. So, And also I would say on that kickoff, we weren't very far away from busting that in the long run. So good job by Ty. And I said, hey, you, you, I told, he actually sat with my family at there last. I said, hey, this guy saved the game for us. Uh, right here at Ty Moss, so kudos to Ty and more good work ahead for him. We've talked so much about defense because obviously that's where you coach at, but I, I think another uh, key to this team is Rajay Harris, who's injured now, not playing, but you can tell those guys love Rajay, and I think Coach Houston has said it, you, know, you miss his play, but you miss his smile around everybody, you miss his leadership in there. He's around when he can be around. He didn't make the trip, but in the celebration in the locker room, and Brian Medor made a point of making sure everybody could see it, but they had a call, a video call with Rajay in the celebration so he could be a part of that celebration and I thought that 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 speaks volumes of of just as we said earlier the family unit that you're trying to to, you know to formulate with this East Carolina football team and just everything that goes on but to see that see Rajay smiling on one end and Keaton Mitchell who had a great great game as the Pirates lead running back and uh, just to see the love that they have for each other every time Keaton scores now he gives the 4-7 for 47 for Rajay Harris but but that had to mean something to you in the locker room. You know, if you just look at the, what football can do for these kids and relationships they build, and and you look at you know the, the relationship between Keaton and Raja, you go into the year and you got two really good running backs for the second year in a row, and who shares the kid gets the carries and touches and all this. Well, these two kids, are you kidding me? They're they're the biggest fans for one another, and I just by luck bump into Keaton after the right there after the melee in the locker room. There he is on the phone with Raja. I mean, that that, that just speaks a lot about football and the great things it can do for these kids. And, and you know, I think that that's just one of hopefully many examples on our football team of kids raising each other up. All right, before we let you go now, my notes have that you were a standout defensive end at Wittenberg. How good a football player was Tim Doust? Was so good, Brian. I tell my players, <laughs> that I paid for my own school. You know? <laughs> no, yeah, there was no scholarships, fill out to fast foot. And then, uh, You'll pay the loans when you're done. That's how good I was. I was lucky to play at a, a tradition-rich school in Division Three football, but that's what it was. I'm happy to get back to Ohio and see some people that uh, I haven't seen in a long time, but hopefully the Pirates show off for me, and uh, it'll be a good night for us. Yeah, you'll be going home for uh, for that trip in Ohio. Uh, Cincinnati and East Carolina, a week from this Friday. Tim Douse is our guest today, special teams coordinator, defensive and outside linebackers coach. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Even though it's an off week, I know you guys got plenty to do over there. We certainly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being on with us. You share some insight on a great, great Pirate win over BYU. It was so much fun 
fun to be there. I mean, some of these games that you get a chance to go to, you, you'll just never forget. Uh, and, and it was just, you know, with the mountains back there, the scenic views for everybody, the pirate fans that were there. I mean, it was really incredible, that many pirate fans that were there. And they all got a chance to see one of the biggest pirate wins of the year as East Carolina knocked off BYU 27-24. So congratulations to you, the entire coaching staff, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you. All right, Tim Douse, as we said, special teams coordinator at East Carolina. Our guest will take our final break. We'll come back and we'll run down some of the matchups uh, in the first round of the high school football state playoffs. We might even bring Clip Brock in to talk about that NFC East because his comrades are doing well in the division. Back with more after this. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant in Bourbon Bar. Join us at the Rick House for mouth-watering steaks and made-from-scratch pastas. Check out the 16-ounce cowboy steak or the seafood delight pasta. Join us for our legendary brunch on Sundays from 10 to 2. The Rick House can feed your larger crowds with off-site catering and room for 125 in our adjacent banquet hall. The Rick House, American Provisions and Spirits, 710 Red Banks Road, beside the bowling alley in Greenville. Your vehicle is a big part of your life. That's why you should trust the team at Greenville Auto World for all your vehicle needs. Greenville Auto World believes in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right. Visit GreenvilleAutoWorld.net to see their fully stocked inventory of SUVs, trucks, and cars. Need a lift kit, custom rims, or wheels? Greenville Auto World can upgrade your vehicle today. For sales or service, visit Greenville Auto World on Highway 43 in Greenville. Sear Chop House is Greenville's only true chop house. We're open seven days a week. Seared combines a remarkable menu with an unrivaled atmosphere. Lunch or dinner at Seared is a quality driven experience where we highlight a thoughtful approach to locally sourced ingredients and hearty flavor rich cuisine. We're firing up the grill at Seared, Greenville's only true chop house located on Fire Tower Road at Bell's Fork. Come see us at Seared seven days a week. All anniversaries are special, but because it's Bostick Sug Furniture's 85th anniversary extravaganza, we packed a lot into our big extravaganza with not one, not two, but three ways to save. Extra 10% off, plus 1937 local delivery, plus six months special financing on all in-stock and custom orders. Change your mattress, change your life, and get 48 months special financing during the big 85th anniversary extravaganza on now at Bostick Sug Furniture. East Coast Grading and Utilities is your source for clearing, hauling dirt, and concrete work. East Coast Grading and Utilities handles all sewer and water issues as well. I'm David Ballin. Whether you're putting in a new subdivision or helping you with any and all of your drainage problems, I can get the job done. Call me at 531-7494. No job is too big or too small. East Coast Grading and Utilities. Friends helping friends. 531-7494. For East Coast Grading and Utilities. Utilities. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. Hi, this is Phil Steele of Phil Steele's College Football Preview Magazine, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back as we wrap things up on this edition of The Brian Bailey Show. High school football, best time of the year. The playoffs kick off on Friday night. 4A play, D.H. Conley hits the road to take on Leesville Road. Conley is a 19 seed after a 5-5 five and five record. Newburn from our area, 10-0, the number two seed in the 4A East bracket, taking on Raleigh Sanderson. Sanderson 
Patterson. And also a 5-5 five and five Newburn undefeated at 10 and 0. Oh. On the 3A ranks, J.H. Rose gets a 14 seed. The loss to Havelock really hurt him as far as the seeding goes because the Rams are the 4 seed. Rose is the 14 seed, taking on Cape Fear in the first round. And most likely the Rampants will hit the road after that. That's on the 3A ranks. And 2A play from our area, Green Central's Rams after that 9-1 and one record. They'll play a host of St. Paul's. The Rams are a 13 seed. Seed. Wes Craven is a six seed. Bun is a 27 seed at four and six on the year. Bun takes on Wes Craven as far as that matchup goes. North Pitt hits the road to take on a very good East Duplin team. East Duplin is the number two overall seed, uh, Eastern seed in the two way bracket. North Pitt a 31 seed. Panthers at four and six on the season. Farville Central is a 28 seed at five and five, and they will take on Northeastern up in Elizabeth City. So that's a long road trip and a very tough assignment for. The Jaguars coming up. Tarboro is the number one seed in the 1A East bracket. Uh, they will have a bye in week number one. Riverside is 9-1. and one. They're an eight seed. They will take on Pamlico County. And uh, down the road, most likely, another matchup with Tarboro. And Riverside's got a good football team, but they were no match for Tarboro earlier in the season. The high school football playoffs kickoff coming up this week. And we'll have some of the uh, week one winners next week right here on the Brian Bailey Show as the playoffs do continue. Got a couple of minutes to go so clip rock joins us and uh, i know you want to brag about that washington football team of yours three four straight. and four on the season three straight wins i didn't think they'd get three the whole year and they got three in a row congratulations every, every time ron rivera's seat gets a little hot he runs yeah. off wins and he's done it again this year i think the owner's seat is a little hotter than ron rivera's but i hope so <laughs> yeah, I think that would be great a lot of people do but that uh, nfc east the eagles uh undefeated have a two-game lead over the cowboys uh the giants with a loss so that helps everybody else out as far as that goes but uh it's kind of it's still fun to watch isn't it on sundays it is now it is. after this three game winning <laughs> yeah, you're streak. one of those that gave up on them you can't give up on your team they'll bounce back i gave up i back in and i'll give up again and get back in but uh yeah it was fun on sunday yeah it was a lot of fun and now we got kirk cousins coming back to washington sets up a oh, big yeah. game the vikings are good this year so the vikings are very good when you win it uh it makes things exciting for the next week and the week after so yeah i'm fired up every time you win the next game gets bigger that's, that's right. exactly what the uh, coach is at is what do you think of the Friday night game? How was how was your Friday night? Uh, I did get a, a text message from you about what time the plane was going to arrive. We were we we were slammed trying to get everything done for the coaches show. Get on the bus and get get on back to to Greenville. Arrived yeah. about six thirty a.m. That was a long night. I tell you what, we've uh, we talked to Jeremy Lewis earlier. Those uh, players are they were shocked and appreciative of those people being out there. Yeah. I don't know how many were there, Bailey. Would you say? A handful. Yeah, I would say a handful, but there were there were there were some. Most of them were related to Holton. <laughs> well, yeah, his brother, his brothers were out there. I think his, I know his girlfriend Grace was out there. So but the average height of the fan but, was six foot eight. Oh, at least six seven, six eight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that was uh, that was a good time. A lot of fun. Twenty seven, twenty four, and a most memorable East Carolina victory on a great trip to Provo, Utah. But it was a great experience, I think, for everybody involved and in getting a chance to go, you know, way out west on a short week. You got to give the Pirates a lot of credit for. Uh, everything they were able to do as far as that goes in that win. Now we got a bye week, and uh, we won't hear much from the – you guys will have it on the players' lounge, but we won't hear much from the players. I think we'll have Mike Houston's going to do something on Wednesday night, if I remember what Malcolm told me. So uh, get ready for that as far as the Pirate Week is concerned. I want to thank Tim Dallas for joining us, special teams coordinator, defensive end, outside linebackers coach at East Carolina Pirates with the bye week this week. Next up is Cincinnati, and the Pirates find themselves right in the middle – of the race in the American Athletic Conference at 6-3 and three on the season. Have yourself a great Halloween. We'll see you back here next Monday on The Brian Bailey Show. This has been The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Boston Chug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Tap Tap and Hagler, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 100.5.